Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. In this video, I am sharing my DIY shed exterior makeover. So this is the storage shed that I have in my backyard. The wood was looking extremely shabby in a lot of areas. The paint is almost entirely faded off. So it needed a little bit of TLC. So you're gonna see me clean, prep, paint, work on building new doors, and completely transform the exterior of the shed. So the first thing I did was pull out my pressure washer and give the whole shed a good cleaning. Now since the siding of the shed is wood, I did not go balls to the wall out on this thing. I didn't want to damage the wood paneling any further, but I was able to lift up the layer of dirt and get a fair amount of the old paint off as well. So then here is a look at how the wood siding looked after I finished cleaning everything. You can see it's very rough looking. So before I paint it, I wanted to give it a little bit of a sanding. And I got this really small scrub brush to use to get in between the grooves of all the siding. There was a lot of like dirt and cobwebs and bugs and all sorts of things wedged in between there. And since I was gonna be painting, I wanted to get as much out of there as possible. And then I'm using my orbital disc sander to just sand over the surface. I didn't spend too much time doing this, but just wanted to smooth it out for the paint. And before I sand it, I did wait probably a few days for the wood to completely dry out after I had washed it. And then here's a look at what the wood siding looked like. After I finished sanding, there was a lot less rough texture to it. I could drag my hand over it without getting a splinter. And now that everything is washed and sanded and prepped, ready to go, I am ready to start painting. So I chose to do just like a basic medium gray color. Just wanted to do something simple to give it a facelift. And I'm using a paint roller that is intended for rough surfaces so it really absorbs more of the paint in and you get a better coverage. I don't know what the paint I used is off the top of my head, but I'm gonna go look and I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen right here and then I'll list it in the description box as well. So far I have had no problems with this. I actually started this project last fall and just finished it now the next year in spring. It seems to have held up pretty well over the winter. The biggest part of this project for me was constructing new doors for this shed. So I did film that process, but unfortunately a bunch of my footage got corrupted and damaged and I don't have it anymore. So there is a chunk in the timeline missing here and I do apologize for that. But later in the video, when I go through a little tour of the finished shed, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the doors. And if you have any questions about how I build these, Check the description box, leave me a comment down below. But the doors that I made sat all winter without being painted, so I got around to painting them the next spring. The only part of the doors that I didn't finish last year was the outside framing on them. So I am cutting wood to complete that. When I built these doors, I followed the exact plans of what the existing doors were, just took the measurements and same setup from those. So after I finished cutting the outside framing, here's what that looks like all laid out. And then I am going ahead and attaching all of those with my nail gun. The previous doors had like the X support design on the bottom of the doors. I decided to just do the single piece of wood. I really don't know what I intended on doing in the beginning, but this is all I had enough wood for. So I was like, it's good. Hey right, guys, I just wanted to give you a little update on my shed doors here. I always like to keep it real and show you guys how my DIY projects almost never go smoothly. I almost always end up making mistakes. I had attached the this exterior framing, nailed everything on like you just saw, and I completely forgot that the hinges needed to be screwed in underneath this exterior framing. As you can kind of see with the old doors, they're under this 
white framing as well. Like I said, I am just copying this as a template, so that is how everything needed to fit together. I ended up prying off all of this with a hammer. It is definitely not pretty. Like there are nail holes galore all over this thing. Screwed on the hinges and then reattached these. So that was an unfortunate little mishap but I'm pretty happy with how these angled support beams turned out. I honestly didn't even know what I was doing, but 45 degree angle, really easy cuts, and they slipped in perfect. So now I'm gonna just sand this unpainted wood and get ready to paint it white. I did a light sanding on the doors before painting, once again, to just smooth out the surface. To paint the exterior support beams, I did tape off the gray part of the door, just so I could go a lot quicker and not make a huge like all finished on the outside like I said unfortunately I lost a bunch of footage from when I constructed the doors together but what I'm gonna do is leave a bunch of measurements and information about what I did down below in the description box and I think I can probably link these tongue in groove boards like the exact ones I used from Home Depot and then I will try to link the hardware that I used as well the doors are definitely not perfect but for a beginners woodworking project I would say I think they're pretty good I'm pretty proud of myself for building them all by myself with no help I still need to play with it a little bit to get a snugger fit when they close and like probably put an actual uh, latch, some sort of attachment to the actual shed rather than just between the two doors. So for the doors, like I said, I literally copied exactly what the previous doors were constructed like. So the insides have these like, I think they're two by fours reinforcements and then the main paneling of the door is tongue and groove boards. And then the only other type of wood I used was like for the front white detailing. So there was three different types of boards that I used to construct these doors. A lot of the wood, unfortunately, around the bottom of my shed is starting to rot a little bit. Um, I actually had to replace this section of wood right here where the hinge attaches because the wood was rotted out so bad. This side of the shed has a lot of overgrowth and this giant stump and then this giant stump we might be able to get these out of our here ourselves because they're so old and starting to rot but I think they really need to get out of here I cleared out a bunch of weeds a little bit too and there's a bunch of these tiny little bugs all over here too I don't know what those are about so yeah you can see down there how it's starting to get a little iffy if I get this out of here and kind of level off the, the land a little bit because there is like a bump of dirt right there, I think that will help get some longevity. And then Sam switched out the light fixture for me, which was awesome. We just previously had an ugly like utility outdoor light. The light fixtures that I used in my bathroom remodel came in sets of two. So I had one left over since there are three above our countertop. It hurt my heart a little bit to spray paint it black, but black definitely fits the vibe and the hardware and kind of the little barn aesthetic. 
the light does look a little puny in my opinion, but free is free. It's better than what was there before. So pretty much my entire yard is shade. So I always have to keep that in mind when picking out plants. And the front of my house and the shed face the east side, which is why I decided to do some hydrangeas. We just got hit by a pretty heavy rain, so they're looking a little flappy right now. But then what I also did with some leftover garden edging that I had is just make the edging a little bit cleaner and just so the mulch wasn't like looking slappy everywhere. Here's what the inside of the shed looks like. I cleaned it out, it's been blown out, vacuumed out. It's pretty good sized space, but I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. It's still kind of creepy in here. Like I don't feel like I would wanna spend a bunch of time in here, but I have seen some really cool posts on Pinterest of people completely spray spraying the inside of their sheds white, which I think would be really awesome. I had thoughts about turning it into a chicken coop, but now I don't know if I wanna get chickens. So there's a lot of potential for this space. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's not a top priority though for what I'm working on in my house. So it might be a year or more before I get to it, but at least the outside isn't an eyesore to look at anymore. All right, you guys, and that is gonna be it for this video. If you have any specific questions about redoing your own sheds, make sure you leave a comment down below if I didn't clarify anything enough for you and check the description box for some links and dimensions on the doors and more information. Make sure you're subscribed for more DIY home content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.